Have you seen a dress that you really like, but the only issue preventing you from making it is that it's designed sleeveless, a tank dress? Well, I have a tank dress to show you and the same dress, but with sleeves. And if you want to see how I've done that, keep watching. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today I have a really, really practical video for you responding to feedback I've received over and over and over on this channel I'm hearing you and I know I love sleeveless things sometimes some designs have sleeves and I opt to remove them but actually some are designed to be sleeveless. And this is the case with the pattern today. The pattern is the Summer Basics Tank and Dress from Love Notions. And it's a pattern that was released last year around this same time of year. And now it's being re-released to improve the sizing up to 5X. So this pattern, along with being re-released, it's also the Feature Friday pattern for today. So it's $5 today and because it's being re-released, it will have a discounted price for this first week. So really cool that you can get it today at a much lower price. And I'm going to be sharing you all about the pattern. So, you know, this is a really nice design and now it can work for more people. Last year, I wasn't able to test this pattern because I had so many things going on, but I did make one during the release week, but I never got around to making a video about it. So. This was the perfect opportunity to show you the dress I've already made and worn and love and how I'm going to do a trick to add sleeves on them. So really exciting. So just keep watching. And as a summary, the Summer Basics tank and dress is meant to be a Summer Basic, basically. Basically, lots of basics here. And there are two versions here, a tank and a dress, and that dress can be either knee length or maxi length. There are two patterns here actually, because the tank version is a whole separate pattern and draft. So it's actually two patterns in one. In addition to improving the sizing up to 5X, a new feature has been incorporated to the pattern that wasn't there before. And that is the addition of a shelf bra. So there are separate pattern pieces to add a shelf bra to the dress and instructions. So if you are the type that love shelf bras on your dress, you just slip it on and go. It's a really, really nice feature to have. This is a comfy, comfy dress designed for neat fabrics that have at least 25% stretch horizontally, so sideways. And you know, a variety of fabrics, light to medium weight knits, cotton spandex, rayon spandex, modal, ITY, double brush poly, athletic knits, anything that you think drapes nicely as well. Um, it could be a fabric that doesn't drape that well too. It's just that the shape of the skirt that is A-line would just be a bit more structured, a bit sticking out more. In my case, I like my A-line skirts to flow and that's why I choose fabrics that have a nice drape. The one I made last year is an athletic knit, super nice and drapey slinky actually. <laughs> and the one I've made now is a rayon spandex. You know, that is a fabric I use a lot and it's always a lovely fabric to look at because it drapes really nicely. About the sizing, I mentioned the sizing was improved. So now body measurements go up to a bust of 57 and a half and a hip of 59 and a half. There is a standard bust bodice as always and a full bust bodice available. The design for both the tank and the dress is that it's fitted at the bust. You have negative ease at the bust, which means that the garment, the pattern pieces are smaller than the body. And depending on the size that you choose, it'll be anywhere from one to two inches smaller than your bust circumference. So that is always good to know. Very common in knit garments to find this feature because you know the, the garments stretch. If you have really big knit garments, then they can look like tents. And it's not the case with this dress because it's meant to be flattering, fitted at the bust. This diagram that you're seeing now shows the intended fit. It's a diagram that is in the pattern instructions and it's really handy to see how the garment is meant to fit. The tank is fitted throughout, the, the bust, the waist and the hips. Then you see that the dress is meant to be fitted at the bust. You can see where the line is intended to hit below the bust. And then you have a lot of room in the waist and the hips. I'm going to show you the dress I made last year. This is an athletic knit. I'll put the composition on the screen there. Very, very slinky, feels cold on the body and fresh to wear. It's wicking, it's, you know, it's just the nicest fabric and I really love it. Maybe you can see the seam of the bodice there. And I did line this dress. It's 
itself lined on the front and then I used a different lining piece for the back just because of the fabric um, availability and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside and now I did the clean sleeveless bodice lining method here this is a front that's lined with self fabric and this is a back that's just lined with another black fabric. I did film the entire process of lining this bodice last year and I'll put an image here of my Instagram profile so you can see it and an arrow where it says tank dress. If you go to my Instagram profile and click on the tank dress there, you can see a whole lot of stories of how I lined this step by step. And I'll put a link in the description box that takes you directly to the highlights to the stories if you want to see how it's done. So you can see how nice and flowy and drapey this dress is. It's a beautiful dress and I wear it all the time. I can't even tell you how much I wear this dress. I know a lot of people want sleeves. And so I thought, yes, this is a perfect project to add a sleeve. It's actually sweltering today and it is not cold at all but I don't regret putting a sleeve on this dress because I know it's gonna get cold again. I am in dead winter right now. In Up Close and So Personal, I'm going to show you an easier route to add a sleeve to a tank, which is not modifying the arm side of the tank and redrafting a sleeve from scratch, no. Not doing that because I know that is something that not a lot of people want to do. Not even I want to do that. <laughs> but I took the bodice of a well-fitting dress, the Willow Wrap Dress. I'll put a picture here. It's a fitted bodice with a wrap style on the front that has a sleeve and I have sewn that before and I know the shoulder fits me and the sleeve fits me really well. So I thought I'd transfer that arm side onto the Summer Basics dress and I'm going to show you how that's done. I've also decided to line this dress as well. I love lining my bodices, especially if they're fitted and especially if it's rayon spandex. The dress is super easy. There's not many pattern pieces. There's a front that I cut twice. There's a back that I cut twice. The front skirt is one piece that's cut on the fold and the back are two pieces that have a center back seam and then there's a binding piece. You're also going to see in all the arts and craft I did with the pattern was that I lowered the bust apex and I didn't go much into that. If you want to know why I did it even on a neat garment, you can see the video about this dress. This is a belladonna. And in that video, I showed where I cut through the pattern and how much I added and why. I'm also going to show you how I united the lining to the skirt to enclose the seam and how I dealt with two layers here on the arm side to attach on the sleeve. So let's hop over there. This is the back bodice of the Summer Basics. It is a shorter bodice because it doesn't go up to the natural waist. It goes below the bust. And for the front bodice, I had to add three centimeters as usual to lengthen the upper chest area and lower the bust apex. That's why you can see that addition there of one and a quarter inches or three centimeters at the back. Now, what is behind this bodice right there is the Willow Wrap Dress. And I've chosen this one because it's the most fitted bodice I have that's for knits that I've already sewn. So that's why I'm going to transfer that arm side onto this sleeveless tank, which you can see is quite narrow on the arms. You know, it is a tank, so there'll be lots of shoulder seam and all that. I have a line there that is supposed to be on the fold. And then I aligned up to this part here, up to where the shoulder meets on the bodice that's underneath. So I've done the best that I can. It will never be a perfect match. I have drawn the new arm side that's under there. I can see it through my paper. So that's the blue line that you see there. This extends it out two by two and a quarter inches. What happens here on the side seam, the one that you see on top here, is the one for the Summer Basics. At the back, the willow bodice is a bit wider. So you can see on the blue line. And I can see from the back right there. So I, I know what is going on behind there with the bodice that I want to get the arm side from. Summer tank bodice is fitted and I wouldn't mind having that extra little bit there and I don't really think that's going to be an issue especially because now I'm going to have a sleeve. So I think I can get away with this of just making it wider and what I've done there is from there just tapering to zero back at the same measurement down there 
so that it matches the skirt. Now on the top, you can see that I've had to uh, change a little bit the shape of the tank shoulder slope a little bit to match this new one that's going down there. It won't affect much of anything at all. So that's what I've done, a little modification up here and a little modification over there and now I'm just going to cut around and I'll have a new pattern piece. Got it upside down so that it matches that. <laughs> The willow wrap dress has a notch there that signifies center front because this overlaps, it's a wrap bodice. So that is where I placed the center front of the summer tank. And so that goes up to there. I've met that up there. The amount that's been extended here is the same amount as the back, two and a quarter inches. And then I just need to transfer this and do the exact same thing. Yeah, just show you there quickly that was a bust point there that is always too high for me and the bodice is too short for me as usual so I had to add the same amount there you can see that I've done to the back one and a quarter inch and that at the same time brings the bust point down and adds the length that I need so the original ones are up there all the slashed and cut up and with pieces it's quite bulky and ugly to work with so I just transferred onto paper there and I have new bodice pieces that have an arm side that will work for a sleeve and I'll just keep those separate in case I want to make another one with a sleeve later on. I have two bodices because I'm going to line them. The bodice is shorter as you can see there and I have attached the sleeves on there to the main one. I've put front main uh, to label them and back main because I have front and back lining pieces as well. So on the main one is where I attach the sleeve in a single layer and I've just sewn it there with 3 8 seam allowance and the shallow zigzag stitch that gives some stretch. The side seams are sewn, I did sew the sleeve on the round like I usually do so that I can separate here the direction of the seam allowances, I find it more comfortable on the underarm, less bulky. This is the bodice lining, so this one doesn't have the sleeves and what I'm going to do now is put the skirt in between these two bodices so that the seam around here will be enclosed. I have my skirt piece here. This is the center back seam and these are the side seams. The front skirt is just one open piece. It was cut on the fold. To put the bodice inside the skirt, I need to flip the bodice right sides out. Okay, so I have my skirt on the outside, my bodice on the inside, both right sides together, side seams matching there and I'm just going to go ahead and pin. So what you see inside is I put the bodice inside the skirt and right sides attaching, front is matching the front and the back is matching the back. Okay, so I've just put a few pins to hold them together. I'm not going to pin the whole thing because I'm going to have to pin it again anyway because now I have my lining bodice that I need to put outside the skirt. So basically I'll have a bodice lining, the main skirt and the main bodice together the skirt in between the two bodices for this one I just need to leave the bodice as is just the wrong sides like that and just put all the skirt business inside this bodice and it can get a little bit bulky because this is a little bodice but it doesn't matter for the lining bodice I'm gonna have right sides to wrong side to the skirt but if I take the skirt away I'll have right sides to right sides of the bodice with the skirt in between. So these three will go together, three layers of fabric. So I'm gonna match the side seams and now I'm gonna pin around, sew and serge. And look, this is the side seam there. These are the side seams from the bodice, both going in one direction and the seam of the skirt is going the other direction. They're all nested together and this is something that you can do to avoid bulk there. You don't want to have them all going the same way. As I serge, I'm making sure I'm not losing anything, I'm not trimming because I don't want to lose seam allowance. Once I've finished serging, then I'll just sew around with my zigzag stitch that will allow the seam here to stretch a little. Okay, so that seam has been done and now let's flip this, just bring this like this and the bodice that's inside bring it out 
and you will see on the inside how that seam is enclosed the skirt and the bodice it's really nice and clean there and there is a seam of the bodice and the skirt this is the inside of the dress you can see the wrong side of the skirt there and the arm side how the sleeve is inside there that was the one that had been sewn before and now the lining is just on top there and I've pinned it around and then I'm just gonna serge all three layers together and that will accomplish two things finish that edge and hold the two together the lining and the mane with the sleeve so on the other side when I wear it this seam is only sewn onto one layer there and it'll be less bulky The shoulder seams here have also got the seam allowance heading in different directions so it's less bulky there. Okay so that's how it's going to look on the inside, the lining there and the seam there and that's what I wanted to accomplish, have the lining come together with the arm side but not with the sleeve seam if you get what I'm saying. It's super neat. Here is my beautiful dress, I love this fabric. It's a bit like the 70s I find, the print is all over the place but it's just one fabric but it looks like it's different types of fabric all in one and I really loved it when I saw it. Happy to have it made into a garment uh, finally because I have many pretty prints in my stash and it's just such a happiness to see them actually made into something and not just an open piece of fabric, right? Um, I did change the way I did the neckline, I didn't do binding I added a neckband and I thought it was just going to look cleaner and it wouldn't need me to do any top stitching there which I didn't want to do which does add a little to the neckline but I don't really mind about tiny differences like that. There is my shoulder and my sleeve, three quarter length, twin needle hem, my bodice seam right there which you can't really see that much because of the print it just looks like it's just part of the dress and the back has a center back seam that you can't really see that much. Here you can see the dress on the inside, you can see that the bodice is self-lined and it encloses the seam there which is really really comfortable in the area where it's touching my body on my torso, it's super comfortable. You know, no seam at the front, center back seam, super neat. Now I want to show you a difference with this lining because because I decided to line this bodice and enclose the armholes and the neckline, you know, in this other method, that didn't allow me to enclose the skirt within the two seams. So you see a seam and a serge edge right there. This is the one I made last year, athletic fabric, super comfortable, I've worn it loads. This is the original length, nothing added onto the skirt. And you know, I like this type of skirt. Up closer you can see where the bodice finishes there, it's underneath the bust. This fabric is really stretchy and really fresh and really nice to wear. The original binding method doesn't lose width on the straps because the binding wraps around so it doesn't get lost inside and because I opted to line it and I didn't add that seam allowance I actually did lose about a quarter of an inch here on the side and on the neckline and hence why the strap looks super narrow but it is still wide enough to cover my bra strap and I'm really happy about that. When I lined this, I did take that into account to figure out if it was going to be wide enough and that's why I just carried on. But in hindsight, I maybe should have added that seam allowance and maybe this is one of the few exceptions where I will add seam allowance. And at the back, it's still got a nice cover and it's got a deeper neckline at the back. I love that deep scoop at the back to match the deep scoop here. And I just really love this dress I wear all the time. As you can see, these straps turned out narrower because of this method. And you know, it's fine for me, this amount is fine. But if you think that it's just too narrow, you would need to add seam allowance here and onto the neckline in order to do the clean sleeveless method. Otherwise, you can just do the binding that is instructed on the pattern and that doesn't make you lose any width because it doesn't take away seam allowance. Here's a full look at my summer basics but can be winter dress because it's got sleeves and I love these colors. For me, they mean autumn and winter. 
although I always love brown but these are more toned down in my opinion brown shoes with heels and I really love this look and would be really happy to wear it when the weather is cooler not today but other days here up closer you can see where the bodice is right there and then how the skirt just skims over the waist and hips I didn't make length adjustments to the skirt so this neckline is actually a tad higher than the original because I added a band it's still a very narrow band as you can see but it does add a tiny amount there I want to show you the shoulders there are right at my shoulders and the sleeve fits perfect there is the length there three quarter length and you know same deep scoop that I love and and at the back too really like it here you can see the bodice you can see this print is really crazy you can't really tell the seam lines that much because the print is like that but there is the seam right there it's how it looks on the side there's plenty of ease here at the waist and the hips to worry about this looking unflattering I think it looks really flattering and just highlights a small area that a lot of women have here I am short-waisted and my waist is below this probably about there but still this area is small for me compared to the rest of my body, you know? I am extremely excited with this dress. It's so nice and it's just the way I imagined it to be with the sleeves. You know, I had that tickle of doubt that it was gonna fit properly, the sleeves, because it's always an experiment when you're doing things like that. It does help that I did know the pattern I was transferring the arm side from that I knew that it fit me. And in that case, it worked. If you want to add a sleeve to a fitted tank, you need to find a bodice that is fitted as well so that the difference at the side seam is not much. You see, I had to add a tiny amount here and then taper to nothing here on the side. And that was in order for this sleeve to fit this tank. But that tiny amount didn't really make that much difference. So you need to find something that is similar. In my case, I found that the size large for both the Willow wrap dress and the summer tank meshed really well together. And it worked amazingly. <laughs> If you want to try this, try and find a fitted knit bodice, a fitted t-shirt maybe, something that has similar width when you compare the center front up to the bottom here of the arm size, see that they are similar so that you can combine them, you know. <laughs> this is the Feature Friday pattern and it's only $5 and it's also on its release week. So it will also be discounted for the rest of the week because it's been re-released. If you want to try this style and also support me, you can use my affiliate link down below when you purchase. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does support me because I get a tiny commission. I hope you're enjoying the pants series. I'm having a lot of fun and I'm actually learning a lot more about my body as well. It's always changing. It's always good to be taking your measurements. So if you've missed out on the Let's Sew Easy Pants series, I'll link it down below so you can catch up. And there's a video all about measuring yourself yesterday. So go and check it out. I will see you very soon with more sewing. Bye.